you think you'll be going back to ISIS? Uh, I, my dream is uh, still to live underneath the Islamic uh, Caliphate. Why is the so-called Caliphate appealed to? Because when the Muslim world looks around in the, in the so-called Muslim world, they see dictators, they see corrupt rulers, they see ignorant people. And so this is for them, they offer this as an alternative to what they see as a failed system. So how are you going to tell people democracy, democracy, democracy? What democracies are you supporting in the Middle East and in Muslim countries? You're supporting dictators. So ISIS provides an alternative to the corruption and the dictatorship that these people are seeing in their countries. I mean, there were young kids who were there who they didn't know what, they were tricked by the, the ringleaders. Geraldine says that growing up, her son was a fairly typical teenager. But after he graduated, searching for direction, Anas appeared to become more serious about his faith. He was praying the five times a day. But Anas was being radicalized and recruited to join ISIS. They think they're going into the woods and playing, you know, G.I. Jihadi. We did what we can do to stop him. When Anas announced that he was going to Syria, Geraldine notified the local police. The police, however, never intervened, and Anas made his way to Turkey and the border with Syria. And you think a lot of kids are now tricked into going into Syria, or is that too naive? I mean, um, I think they are already naive. So they told you they knew your son was yeah. joining ISIS, that yeah. they decided because he yeah. was 18 years old, he yeah. was an adult, they were just going to yes, let him go. Yes, he can do what he wanted, so we can stop it. A police officer said Yes. Uh, the kids are naive. They think what they're seeing, th these are heroes, right? The Nasheeds are playing and it makes it sound so nice and they want to be a part of that. Especially for a young boy, uh, he, wants to, he wants to be a hero. Anas was killed in Syria. I have only a small message from a friend who was there with him and um, he said to me, your son is dead during the attack of Der Selzo. You must be proud of him. And even in our own Western societies, we treat our militaries like heroes. So what militaries do they have that they can relate to, that they can say, oh, these are my heroes? Be proud of him. And nothing else, nobody, no, nothing. Today, Geraldine blames the recruiters who convinced her son that it was his duty as a Muslim to join the Islamic State. We don't understand how they are able to change the brain, the brain of the young to, uh, to accept to do that. And that's what you have. You have a deficit of heroes in the Muslim world. And so you have terrorism disguised as heroism. What authorities didn't count on is that some of those young men would come back, including this man standing next to Anas in a photo from Syria. He's Abdel Hamid Abaoud, also from Molenbeek, and the suspected ringleader of the Paris attacks. All of the known gunmen turned out to be European citizens, and in many ways they share the same profile. Young Muslims who were born in Europe, the sons of immigrants, prime targets for ISIS recruitment. So the um, counterterrorism side of my brain is saying, let them talk. Let them talk, let them make buddies with their friends here and their friends there, and we will monitor everything. And we will find out everyone, where they are, who they're friends with, what their cell phones are, what their email accounts are, and we'll monitor them. And when the time comes for us to strike at them, we have all the information we need to do that. The messages often spread through slick online videos, but also face-to-face, -face, sometimes starting as simple conversations. They can come to see us to become radicalized. They tell us how to become people. People who are turned in Paris, who come to us to discuss, who tell us, stop being dressed like this, stop having hair like this. How many times are the people... Three times in my life, three times. They go to the white side, and then they become people who are bad. The other hand, by allowing them to do this, you're spreading their message. You are allowing their message to spread. Now, I believe Twitter could have shut down accounts from the very beginning, but they did not. 
انضمام للدولة الإسلامية وكان عمري 14 سنة 14 سنة ومن ثم بقيت لحتى سجلت على عملية استشهادية يعني ربما نجد أغلبهم إلى الآن منصرف في الألعاب منصرف في أمور التسلية منصرف في مشاغل الدنيا والله هذا زمان هذا الزمان زمان وفتن والله ألم تشتاق لي رب العالمين الذي خلقكم ألم تشتاق لي رسول الله ألم تشتاق لي أحبابكم الشهداء ورب البيت تفنى رب الجناح مشمرينا أحبتنا It becomes like a death cult and that that really is the best explanation of what ISIS is. You know, Islam is a religion. It's a cult. I can't tell the future, um, but I can say this is a trajectory that we're headed on. And it's not a good one. There are more conflicts in the world. There's more resentment. And there are, in numbers, more youth. What are you going to do with those youth? If you don't move towards integration and preventing alienation, this is nothing what you see now. So I was an undercover. Uh, I put people in prison for what they were doing. And that they didn't like. What are they, Islamic State fighters? No, yeah, they're my brothers in Islam. Why do you think then that people like yourself are joining ISIS? We have people, not only people who are uh, uneducated, we have doctors, we have uh, nurses. Those people also leave. But, and because of what? Because they believe there's something better than this society. La ilaha illallah! La ilaha illallah!